Hey guys, welcome into another overclocking and undervolting video. This time we have three 6700 XTs on the bench. And yes, I've done the 6700 XTs before. I only had one on the test bench and also I was using a different power supply. So I've switched over to this Aorus 850 watt power supply. It's still 80 plus gold, but I believe it's slightly less efficient. So yeah, it could be good to switch out power supplies, see what uh, efficiency I get on other ones because, I mean, this one was what I was using before and it seemed to be uh, a bit more efficient than probably what everyone else has. So it's going to give me numbers that other people aren't able to achieve. Although that said, those three GPUs are drawing uh, 200 and... 97 watts on average so that's 280 between the three gpus so it's like 93 point something each which yeah on my last test was 93 and a half or something but i had to do a bit more fine tuning this time obviously i've got three of them on the bench so they all get kind of slightly different settings uh, and I'll show you that in the software so you guys can have a play around, see how low you can get yours. And yeah, you might just be able to use one of the settings that I've used for one of these. Uh, yeah, so I'll jump into the software side now and show you guys the settings and how much mega hash we can get for that wattage. Hey, so I'm in the software side now and I've got the numbers up on screen. So we've got 297 watts at the wall, minus the 17 watt system idle is 280 watts for the three GPUs, which is 93.5 watts each roughly. Uh, and then I'm getting an average of 46 mega hash because of this GPU being lower. Uh, and then divide that by the wattage per GPU, gives us 0 0.4919 as the efficiency for this GPU on this power supply. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so pretty good efficiency, more efficient than most other like NVIDIA GPUs, uh, except for like this 3070 uh, full hash rate and potentially the uh, 3060 Ti full hash rate as well. Um, but this is like, it's a pretty good figure to go for like. Uh, and one of the other things to note is that it barely pr uh, produces any heat. You can see it's at 47 degrees and 60 degrees mem. And that's at 25, 30 and 35% uh, fans. So like not producing a lot of heat at all. Um, where an NVIDIA card that can do the same mega hash like a 3060 Ti would be or LHR 3060 Ti would be uh, a lot hotter and using a lot more power. Um, yeah, so it's pretty decent GPU, but it's not as good as the other uh, AMD 6000 series GPUs, like the 6600 XT and, and the uh, 6600 non-XT and the 66, sorry, 6800 and XT variant. And 6900 XT, they're all better than this one. Um, <clears throat> that said, it's still a good GPU, especially you can, if you can get it for a good price, or especially a good price to mega hash ratio. Um, yeah, I'll talk quickly about this one. So, for some reason, this GPU will crash at 1075 mem clock, so uh, it's at 1055. Uh, yeah, so just get like 1.35 mega hash less than the others which is yeah a little bit unfortunate but is what it is uh i can get slightly more mega hash on these like 46.5 just by increasing some of these uh numbers here i think it was the vdd potentially uh <coughs> no actually it was core clock as well core clock and then core voltage which is the vdd that one there um, so I, to try and get a bit more efficiency out of these, because in my last video I used a 1250 uh, core clock, and I probably, I think I had a 660 on the VDD. Uh, on this one I'm trying to get it more efficient again, which I wasn't able to. Um, 
so I used the lowest core clock that could sustain uh, this mega hash and yeah that was what I landed on and then once I'd done that I was able to get the core clock lower uh, for some reason yeah this one because the memory clock was lower it just didn't want to push the core voltage as low uh, even though I could get a lower core clock which is yeah just kind of a bit weird and then it started uh, crashing a little bit uh, as you can see all up here it was mostly caused by this first GPU because I did have it down at like 72 watt software um, so I had to change some of the settings increase them in order to uh, get this one stable so if I were to take that one GPU out it would actually be much more efficient <clears throat> this one here if I removed it from the equation would probably be looking at like 92 watts or maybe 91 and a half watts each uh, but yeah, I mean nothing crazy. I figured I'd include uh, all three of them in there because like I assume people that are looking at this video are like trying to get a gauge before they buy these GPUs or something. So uh, realistically this could happen. You could have a GPU that can only get 45 instead of 46 and a half. <clears throat> these are all the settings. So I mean this is the one that kind of sucks. 1055 instead of 1075 min clock this is the best one to be honest so this one yeah 1145 core clock you might want to go up to like 1150 or so 630 on the core voltage this one I have previously had uh, this crash the rig so this is just something weird that happened so VDDCI I could just lower this one like heaps on this GPU. I got it all the way down to 500 uh, <clears throat> and the rig was pretty stable with it at 500. Um, I did increase it to 600 because it didn't actually do anything. It didn't bring the wattage down which is weird. Usually decreasing these numbers brings the wattage down but yeah it just kept going down to 500 and didn't crash anything but yeah put it back up just for stability purposes because it didn't change the wattage at all uh, the other ones if I go below well uh, even at 600 they were slightly unstable so I put them up to 605 hopefully if you guys have just a good one of these cards or a good 6700 these settings should work if your mega hash is a bit low then you probably have to push the core clock up a bit or potentially play with the memory clock uh, if the rig is crashing, getting any GPU driver errors, it means you need to increase the millivolt settings. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. One of those needs to be increased. You probably won't know which one, so just increase them all until the rig is stable. And then once it is stable, you can, if you want to, start working back down. So uh, say the rig was unstable you increased them all by 20 and then that made the rig stable then you go back through and you change one of them to be what it was before so say i change this to 650 now I'll put it back to 630 and leave the rest higher than they are and then reboot the rig see if that crashes see if it's stable for a couple of hours uh, if it's stable move on to the next one because you know that that one wasn't the issue and then eventually you'll get to one setting that you change back to this and it crashes and you'll know that's a setting that needed to be higher. And the last one here has, uh, for some weird reason, uh, this is the one I did the testing on in my last video. So I had 1000 on the SOC VDD Max, but uh, after running it for a couple of days, it had a couple of crashes. So I increased it to 1005. Uh, and that pretty much made it fully stable, so left it at that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this one. Nothing more to say, really. Um, sometimes it shows lower in the software, like all the way down to like 72, some of them 74 previously on my other overclock settings, but when you measure it from the wall, uh, this is actually doing better, these settings, so... Because um, I'm on a slightly less efficient power supply but also uh, drawing the exact same amount of wattage so these settings are slightly better than the last ones I had 
uh, decreasing the core clock and core voltage did help a little bit but because uh, I switch power supplies that's negated pretty much so yeah getting the exact same as I did last time uh, and one last thing to say is if anyone has an XFX card 6700XFX uh, I've seen a video where some dude got theirs all the way down to like 805 on the SOC VDD Max uh, I definitely cannot do that <laughs> if I put any of these like 10 lower they crash so <clears throat> yeah he had his card running at 85 oh no sorry 65 watts uh, in the software and then 85 or like 84 at the wall so a lot better than mine are so yeah if you got an xfx 6700 xt you might be able to do that too but i will say that he did uh, stop the miner so he came up here minor actions stop the miner and then he changed the setting to uh, like 805 vdd max and then he went back up and he clicked restart miner so i think if he had have rebooted that rig it probably would have crashed but yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this video, so thanks for watching. If these settings helped you in any way, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and support the channel. Uh, yeah, have a great day. See ya.